In this lesson, we're going to be talking about component properties. So imagine that we would like to make this component customizable and that we would like the message and the version to be passed on as inputs here to the component itself. Now we can do so by defining here input properties in the component. So let's go ahead and let's try to do that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close here the browser and let's add here a props property here to our component creation function. So this looks a lot like React. We get here the input properties and we could already use them here to access, for example, the message property and also here the course version property. So I'm going to rename this here to course version. And as you can see, we get here a compilation error. We could already remove these unused variables and these usually in React would already work, but we get here a compilation error. Property message does not exist on type empty object. So what is going on here? What happens here is that Quick is forcing us to define a specific type to the props property in order to keep our program type safe. By default, Quick is going to assume that this object here contains no properties. So if you check the type of this object inferred by the TypeScript type inference mechanism, you're going to see that with Control Shift P, this is of type empty object. So it does not contain any properties. We want instead for the properties to contain a message and a course version. So the way that we can do that is by passing here a generic parameter here to the component dollar API. And this generic parameter is going to take a type which corresponds to the type of the properties object. So we know that this properties object contains two properties itself, one being the string and the other being the course version, which is a number. So with these two properties in place, we now have defined here the type for the props object. So if you check here again with Control Shift P, you're going to see that this indeed has the correct TypeScript type as expected. And you can also see that this has been solved, the compilation error that we had here. So this is now working correctly. Notice that instead of applying here the type as a generic parameter to component, you can also go ahead and define it as an inline type here for the props property. And that would also work. So the generic parameter would have been inferred by the explicit type here of this variable. But this is all very cumbersome and hard to read. So what I recommend that you do instead is to define here an interface and this interface is meant to only be used here inside this file. So you can even call it simply props. And here you're going to be defining it as the properties here of this component. You can then go ahead and apply here the generic parameter type. You can call it props. And now the compilation error is fixed because now Quick knows that this props variable here is of type props which we can see here using the type inspection tool. So as you can see, this is a much more readable way of defining your input properties in Quick. If you are worried about having multiple interfaces named props in different files, what you can do is apply here the component name to the property interface. And this way you're going to have unique names. This way of defining the type of your input properties has the slight advantage that using an inspection tool such as, for example, WebStorm command shift O, where you're trying to open something here in the whole project, you can go here to the classes tab and you can see here the class correctly identified. So you click on it and you go to the corresponding file. So I think this is the most practical and convenient way of defining your input properties. Just define a small interface with a unique name and pass it here as the type parameter of component dollar. Your props are going to have the correct type automatically via the TypeScript type inference mechanism. Notice that here we have added 
input properties to our component but here we are not passing these properties here to hello message so the end result if we switch to another window is that we are not getting anything here printed out to the screen so we need to go back here and we need to add these missing input properties for each of these cases let's then fill in here the missing input properties we can use command space or control space to get here auto completion and this is made possible due to the integration that this ide webstorm has with jsx with visual studio code you should also have the same feature so i'm going to fill in here a message and as you can see we are automatically applying here an expression we don't necessarily need this we can replace this with a plain string let's call this here for example hello world and let's fill in here the course version and notice that the course version is a number so if we try to pass in here a string we are going to get here a compilation error type string is not assignable to type number so let's instead replace this with an expression and let's pass in here for example version one so now if I switch here to another window where I'm running here the application we are going to see that indeed the first instance is showing here the correct input properties as expected let's go back here to our application and I'm going to quickly fill in here the properties for the other instances of the component so I have now filled in here some more input data let's go ahead and see that everything is working correctly and as we can see that is indeed the case so now we know how to pass input properties to a component in a type safe way and notice that if you hover over the component and hit command and click on the component name you're going to jump directly to the file of the component if you go back here to where we are calling the component and you hit command and you hover over for example one of the properties and you click on it you're going to jump straight to the definition of the property and also its usages inside the component you can see that both things are highlighted here by the IDE so these are just a couple of nice IDE features that are going to make your life much easier while developing with Quick another very common practice that you're going to be doing with input properties is to destructure them in order to avoid always having to call here props from the template so you can do that in the following way this is just plain typescript syntax you can use here the object destructuring syntax you assign it here props and you create here multiple constants you can use auto completion for that you have here the two constants message and course version and if you now use them here on the template you avoid having to call props everywhere so this is more readable and i think it's a better way of handling input properties in general now one final thing about input properties you can make them optional so for example imagine that the message property you would like to make mandatory but the course version you would like it to make it optional so for example here we shouldn't get a compilation error in case that this property is not defined if you want to do this all you have to do is here in the type definition of the property you can mark this as an optional property of this interface and with this if you go back here you're going to notice that the compilation error is now fixed if we check the output of our program here in the browser we're going to see that indeed here on the third message the version is not filled in as expected and now one very last thing about properties that i noticed while editing this video which is i have left this syntax here showing that the component takes a generic parameter which is the type of the property but we don't have to define this parameter explicitly so instead we can go ahead and we can simply add a type annotation here to the props object and the generic parameter is going to be inferred by the TypeScript compiler automatically using type inference. I think that this syntax is more natural. We don't introduce here the notion of generics. Generics are being used implicitly under the hood to give us type safety, but we don't have to add here the parameter explicitly. Personally, I prefer this syntax and I recommend that you use it. I think it's easier to understand, but both syntaxes work equally well and are equivalent. So you can choose any of the two syntaxes, 
Personally, I prefer this one with the type annotation, but if you want to use generics in your project, go ahead. I just recommend that you use the same approach in every component of your project. Let's now continue our exploration of Quick Fundamentals. Let's talk about event handlers in Quick. With the understanding of event handlers, we are going to be able to talk a bit more about how Quick works internally. We are going to demonstrate the lazy loading capabilities of Quick, and we're going to understand a bit better how Quick is so much different than previous generation frameworks. 